what the rhythm cells to propagate from theirs. So the ones would basically be placeholders for that because of the of theirs. Now the heart of the, of the application, there's a the part solution, which uh, basically simulates here, I'll see. <laughs> and basically resamples the question sets uh, based on the frequency of each answer. So each pass through my Carlson simulation, each letter will have a different, um, basically different uh, selection on the answer sets. So if somebody agreed, then it would get a certain way, it would get through at least cost capital degree, and another uh, pass through choose a different question and assign weight to that, and it would go for as many times as we assign it as necessary. Uh, the benefit of this is it, it uses multiple least class paths, so in the end we have a general area of where the public would be uh, applicable to placing the uh, transmission line. And it also includes all of the response attitudes. So instead of just saying, okay, well, we're just going to sample the people who agree, then we, we actually can sample all of the public response and say, okay, well, we want to consider the people who don't agree. <coughs> And this is just a quick um, summation of what my post information does, which is basically what it just suggests. Now, back to the math of the rational I said something about modifying the weights. Uh, we have a scale, this is a uniform distribution, um, basically assigning one to strongly agree and point nine to strongly disagree. What these do is they multiply the utilities weights, which we saw at the beginning, and adjust them in the manner to allow the social data to manipulate the utility data. Now, we have to be really careful here because we don't want the, sur the survey data to go in and say, well, uh, something that the utility wants, uh, we're going to take, total, take that totally away, but at the same time, we don't want the public attitudes to be agreed um, that just so this, so here, so here's an example of a modifier we have point one. Remember the actual, um, well, the actual utility rate was point eight, so we've actually lowered this significantly. So agreeable answers would be, but sorry, would be um, weighted this way. In turn. Uh, modifier we have point 0.9 only adjusts the utilities weight slightly to disagreeable answers if this question were asked, do you want to agree that the branches would be weighted this way? So to characterize the social data directly, we subtract that from them. So so the disagreeable or the agreeable answers saying we should avoid any uh, branches that actually can the high cost. So these are actually cost rasters. I should say that. So we have a high cost or should avoid branches, which is what we want. And based on the question. And the point nine weight, no need to avoid branches is the lower. Because the lower cost so that's again to be more. Then, in this class of math analysis, we want to cross simulation. Uh, basically, takes each layer, so we have, say, branches here, uh, agriculture, we have several different layers. Let's all get out together into one final class roster where we can do this class of math analysis to combine it. And that happens to be equal. So, this is basically in the algorithm. So, one pass from my curl simulation, and then this is what we need. So, we decided to call our application Night Sider. Next one for me. And this, this application is built on that spatial framework. It's open source, so it has the benefits of the open source community. Uh, you can customize and improve the application. And in a bit of the scope of the original application is just great. 
Uh, joint strainer, GIS analysis functions, we had statistical inputs, which the social scientists can use because uh, we want to do that social thing in there. And it, it is intended to extend the basic mapping functions of GIS by adding rational regulation, minor problem simulation, and the least cost passive analysis. So this is a wonderful photo. This is the basic uh, interface. Uh, it has the legend, as we have the map, that we should program. I've added two chart functions, and then this is actually two ones which I forgot to probably into one, which was interesting to me. Uh, this is the presence and absence of uh, master. This is something that the application did. It's actually incorrect at the moment, but it will be fixed. So basically you have these would be the presence and the absence of series of moments. This is the Monte Carlo simulation. It's not actually hooked up to the raster. Uh, this is basically the testing process. Um, but you can see the, uh, the frequencies at top <laughs> pretty much match the Monte Carlo process and here's the image. The LineSider um, application actually will accept XML, it will, it's not yet, but will accept XML frequency data, so based on future classes. So the social uh, scientists will be able to put together an Excel spreadsheet and split it and then input it into the application for the analysis. And this is a test application for the least cost path analysis that we're trying to put into the application. Um, this is not actually part of the line center application, it's a simple prototype. Uh, basically, it's using an array of text boxes filled with static data so that they can control uh, their least cost path is coming. Questions? Why are you exporting Excel to XML? Did that just make it over your head with a bug or something? <laughs> Please understand what you mean, social scientists. Which is why I'm asking the question. <laughs> I mean, why not just import Excel in the first place again? Um, that's a good question. I guess we want to be able to interact with the database as well. Uh, that was that's kind of the idea that we looked at behind this. Um, it's, it's still a, you know, in progress, so we're still working with it and finding the best way to do this. So. Well, I think it would be the ability to get some of file and back to the If somebody else wanted to, they could generate it out of like SPSS or SAS or another package besides Excel. That's a good point. I mean, if they start using Excel, then we can use it in the Were there other parts associated to it? Like, um, Maybe a formation or something else is not swapping on the map again. Yes, it's taking your time. Um, the idea is the utility that you buy the master format, so they would have a cool base associated with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's uh, designed as a kind of business system to be used in the kitchen in the room to this. They were in the restroom at the same time as we were talking about the way we were going to lay on the restroom. You know what I mean? And so on. 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 Points and other points. And so we will now have a discussion about the second group of land. We have a conference in the special This is what that land would be able to do. So instead of actually citing the line, citing a power plant, you say, yeah, power plant would be marketable. Um, well, I guess I have a feeling that we don't know. 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 We 
yes and no, and who they are, and that one. Because even yes, yeah, because yes. um, I mean, not that these costs have to be that's pretty much, I mean, cost costs are good. You, you can accumulate either probably on the next point where you're concerned about the distance between the two and the one. So you create a, a thing and then you add up all the costs and the settles and so that's about a pair of them, I guess. And then you find them in a new position. You find them in the sum in the area. Yes. What does the Monte Carlo characters mean? In my part of uh, the examples, the question says, the better frequency of the administration would be the advertising. Kind of related. Yes. Okay, so what my Carlo simulation does is, I've got this distribution here. Uh, I select. Those are answers, so that somebody's going to ask, how important is it to you to avoid? Uh, ranches or schools or large tracts of uh, chicken. Or this is probably the back. Whatever, yeah, whatever the feature is, how important is it to avoid it and on a scale of A through E? And then this is your feedback here, your response distribution uh, on the left, right? Right, and then it's the sum up. So, um, so A and B, 0 to 10, B and B are the 10 to So it it's left. The um, area within the question. So then we take, um, for example, this says 0.92, which we want here to say, okay, 0.92 is going to be 91, 0.91, 0.95. It would select that answer as the uh, answer for this pass from the model stage. Okay, so we're just take, taking the whole distribution to account each time, and we're assuming there's one in each time. Right, exactly. And then, um, so it goes through and it implies that that weight to the raster of that for that particular feature class. And then once that's done, it goes and does it again. And it does that for every um, feature class that is considered in the process. So if I've got 10 different features that I want to look at, and I've got questions from all, and it goes through the my plot process in times for each of these resources. Okay. So is there that's that raises a good question. I haven't used Monte Carlo that much. Is there a reason why that's a better approach than just using your statistical you know mean that that would make something useful and since um by using the mean, we can get something like the same in the middle, right? Uh -huh. the mean. Um, doing it this way, we actually can say, all right, we get these class paths saying, this guy right here has an inclusion. This guy here has an So we get these class paths based on all of those situations. Uh -huh. And again, then we get this. This right here, which in a sense, in the end, you wouldn't be getting some of the new this at this point here and say, well, okay, we're going to have to um, combine all this into one piece of content anyway. The really cool thing is when you have, we have a lot of binomial distributions and survey data, so you get like a whole bunch of people who say, I absolutely want to avoid chicken farms, farms. and a whole bunch of people say, yeah, that's fine, right. another thing might be a chicken farm. <laughs> and so you get this binomial distribution, if you take the average of uh, answers, you get a whole bunch of people who say, no, I don't care. And so this, this way, theoretically, the result will come up with two optimal paths that sort of support both in these sets. And, uh, and I'll see how it works. Mm -hmm. 